I just. <clears throat> well, everyone, if you tuned into Ustream by going to kcaa.com or if you went over to kcaaexpress.com and click Ustream or would just tune in and listen to, be listening to our podcast on your cell phone or computer or notebook, uh, you'd be seeing that I'm holding up a sign right now that says to vote yes on the right to know. And go ahead, uh, Kathy, and tell them what that website is that they need to go to. Uh, the website is uh, CaliforniaRightToKnow.org. So it's C-A-R-I-G-H-T-T-O and then N, K I'm sorry, K-N-O-W dot org. So right to right, right to California right to know and this California is CA so it's CA right to know dot org everybody and if you if you are listening to this and hearing about GMOs and that there are things in your food that you don't know about for the first time would you please please go to California right to know dot org and start finding out what is going on because this is something that's being kept from the uh, American people. Uh, there's big time lobbying money being spent in Washington, D.C. to influence our politicians to fast track practically every single food we're eating to become a GMO food. And Monsanto, the company behind this, I mean, they made, it was something like $50 billion last year or maybe it was even uh, more than that. So they have plenty of money uh, to throw around on lobbyists and getting their way in government and they actually went get get this uh, I don't know if you heard about this uh, Lee and Kathy uh, which um, just to let you guys know we're here with Kathy Cox and Lee Egan uh, Lee Egan's from Clark's Nutrition and Kathy is from uh, the California Right to Know campaign uh, and uh, I just thought this was so fascinating because I just finished reading that there was a group called, it was like Biologic, it was actually a research facility in the UK that was looking at the fact that the pesticides that Monsanto makes to use on these GMO crops is wiping out the bees, not only in the US but in other countries around the world. And so there was this UK research facility that was looking at the, t the link between the pesticides and uh, the bee die-off and trying to see what was going on there. Well, their research was showing a link between Monsanto pesticides and the bee die-off. So what did Monsanto do? They bought the research firm. firm. Yeah. Mm. They yeah. bought the research firm, everybody. So if you think that you're like getting all the information out there on what's going on with the food, and this is the food that you're feeding your family, your small children, your two-year-olds, and Lee, can you tell us about um, like what's in the formulas? Oh my goodness, the baby formulas, formula. the baby formulas. If you look at, it contains cornstarch. It contains children cannot digest. By the way, a lot of those infant formula cannot digest heavy amounts of those cornstarch, fructose corn syrups. And then the fat, which is... And, and this is in baby formula. Exactly. And, she, and part exactly. of these are made with GMO, genetically modified corn. crops. <laughs> okay, corn, corn and, so, and soy. Boy, if you get a soy yes. formula, yes. that soy is also genetically right. modified. Right. So, and some of the studies are just really upsetting on what it's doing. And we were talking earlier about how these things are actually making people fat. They're exactly, that obesity is, is really rampant in our country more than any other country in the world. Why? And I do solely really believe that genetically modified has something to do with because long term studies nobody know, nobody done really long term research. So this is, could be one of the way that people do need to aware. Right. Did no. you hear what Lee yeah. has to say? There has been no long-term research. Yes. So guess who is the research project? We, we Us. are. <laughs> we're, we're the guinea pigs, we right? Yeah. And yeah. why don't you, uh, Kathy, you, you were going to tell, uh, tell us a story about something that really had a big impact on you. It was someone else's story. Why don't you share that with us? Well, thanks so much. Um, I, you know, working out in the, in the Inland Empire, I've talked to um, a number of uh, different people. They all um, have uh, talk to me about different things about this uh, subject, but one in particular um, I'll share with you today. Uh, his name is Patrick. Uh, he was a severe asthmatic and um, he of course he went to the doctor. He had numerous medications that they prescribed for him, none of which 
uh, worked. Uh, and so he decided that he would try a uh, raw milk, uh, no, GM, no GMO food diet. Uh, and within a short amount of time, his asthma completely disappeared. And on a, a good positive note, his blood pressure actually went down as well. Uh, so this was after many years of, of him suffering uh, from his condition. He had numerous trips to uh, the emergency room. Emergency room, room where you can't of, breathe. A very life threat. That is scary. He actually, yeah. he, he, he actually said he died and they had to resuscitate oh him my God. on the way to the hospital. So oh it's a God. very touching story. Um, and there so, are parents out there that are suffering with children yeah. that have uh, asthma, I know. Very and and hasn't, asthma has just been rising, the mm -hmm. amount of uh, cases of asthma. Allergies is also rising, so you wonder why. See, this yes. is direct we, connection. We, absolutely, a direct connection. Mm -hmm. um, and in his case, he is a, you know, his personal story does touch many uh, Listeners, I'm sure out there you probably know someone that has some form of allergy or is suffering from asthma. Um, you know, I, I uh, suggest that you try it for two weeks. Try two weeks. I have some others that are trying the two-week no GMO diet, and they're they're getting very good results. So thank you, Patrick, for your um, personal story. We appreciate that. Um, and uh, another. A story uh, about uh, a mom. She's actually become more nationally known. Uh, her name is Robin O'Brien, and she uh, is an author of The Unhealthy Truth, and she also is the founder of the Kids Allergy Foundation. And uh, she was a mom uh, just uh, several years ago, a mom busy with four young kids, and uh, she was feeding her kids and she didn't want anybody to tell her what to feed her kids or not to feed her kids. So um, one day she was fixing their breakfast, typical breakfast of Eggo waffles, you know, blueberry yogurt and scrambled eggs. Which yes. would have GMOs in there, by the way. We'll all have GMOs. <laughs> and um, after her kids finished the breakfast, her youngest son had a severe allergic reaction right away. Um, it was so alarming to her that she started researching it that day. Um, and she found that a number of the foods that we are consuming that are bought in our grocery stores are not only unhealthy but unsafe. She also learned at this point that's when the genetically engineered foods came out on the market. Um, between 1997, we were talking about allergies earlier, between 1997 and 2002, uh, the number of peanut allergies doubled, uh, and the number of hospitalizations related to allergic reactions to food increased by 265%. That is huge. It's substantial. In that, that's a, that's a red years. flag. That's a red flag for us in public health. We see something like that, and we're trying to figure out what is the source? Absolutely. What, what is the trigger for this yeah. that, that's making it happen? So during this time frame, uh, one of the first GE foods to undergo GE modification GE was one. milk, um, which is number one food allergen in the U.S. today. Just, just by it. Just uh, uh, it's already. just it is uh, people. A lot of people. Well, are well, tell them tell them why why that might even be increasing. What are they putting in the milk? Well, now? the milk in 1994 is when they came out with this genetically engineered uh, growth hormone uh, they used in the dairies uh, to increase milk production. Right. I know, I know and, and you probably you probably family. remember when that <laughs> happened, Lee, because I that was probably a big thing at Clark's to mm -hmm. see that happening. It yes, was upsetting. on the store shelves. I'm sure you yes. saw that ingredient in there. The the, the modified ingredient was called um, RBGH, uh, the acronym for recombinant bovine growth hormone. Um, and um, they used that in the cows to increase milk production. However, what they found was it resulted in higher rates of disease. Uh, so what they did was to counteract that, they turned around and, and started uh, increasing the amount of antibiotics they were giving to these dairy cows. So here we are, we're getting a modified growth hormone along with antibiotics that we are turning around and giving our kids a glass of milk. 
um, there's a direct correlation to that. And, and when, she, when you say, um, to, just to let everyone know, the bovine growth hormone was made by Monsanto as another genetically modified organism. And I, I've heard that like the udders of these cows, because it was increasing the production more than was normal for a cow. Uh, it was making them produce so much milk that it was making their udders get gigantic. Did you hear that about yeah. that? Oh, the you know commercialized farming in general is just such a sad state. How anyway, they're treating so the animals that to put you them know parlays that. back into our health in general. Yes, it uh, truly does. Um, so. Uh, well, and uh, it is the, one of the driving factors behind the rise in antibiotic resistant uh, Take a walk on the wild side Will the birds and the bees survive? Right before me my newfound hippie side Once ignored these conspiracies online Out the window visions of the earth Sign me up now